This is your host, Stephen Brent Sargent, coming to you again. I actually posted today about the current state of the cryptocurrency job market. And I had a really great question for one of my close connections, Ash, who's actually worked in crypto compliance before. She asked, what kind of due diligence should candidates do before joining a crypto company? She went on further to ask, do you think just focusing on the funding a company's received is a major factor in the decision, uh, especially with crypto companies just emerging in this bull, recent bull market that we had and that may have multiple products and services? How does a candidate make a call like this? So I decided just to quickly record some of my initial thoughts and go into detail uh, about what I've seen from a recruiter perspective, but also from like a job candidate perspective and as a consultant and just speaking to other industry professionals that are working in crypto, NFTs, blockchain spaces, especially around the AML. So these are the things I would look out for. I broke them down to about five main categories. The first thing is what is the approach? especially if you're not applying to these companies and they're reaching out to you. If it's something like a random LinkedIn message where they're giving you vague information about the position, they may not even use your name. It may be just like a hey, or it just starts off in the body of the text that they checked out your profile and you fit the description, even though you don't have NFT, blockchain, or any other keywords in kind of your heading or your about me section. Those are instant red flags that they're not approaching you how they would approach the best in the industry. Think of some of the best people working in this industry. I always used to use this when I I'd talk in, in about Peter Wark. Because I'd always used to say, like, would they approach Peter Wark like that? Mind you, he has about 30 years experience, built up large AML departments and major banks and in crypto companies. But still, if they're not even approaching me close to that, then I'd have to expect that once I get into a position or interview process, I would be receiving that same type of approach and respect. So that's one thing. If someone approaches you like that, I would either ignore it, to be quite honest, because I think this is where a lot of applicants get upset. They're approached with this vague, almost scammy uh, uh, type robot or bot type LinkedIn message. And then they quickly respond because they're desperate for a job. And then no one ever responds back to them because it's very automated. And then they get mad that recruiters are ghosting them. Well, what is your self-image? If somebody approaches you like that, if someone was just giving out jobs at the corner of the street at, at Bay in Wellington, uh, would you accept, Would you just walk in and say, yeah, I want to work? Like, yeah, I'll take that job. Of course not. So it's the same approach that they're doing on LinkedIn. So do your due diligence or simply just don't respond or ask them for more information. And if they're not willing to give that, then just completely move on. Um, also think, was it through a recruiter? And is that recruiter reputable, not only in the AML space, but in the crypto space? This is a very unique market that takes real industry understanding and skills, even as a recruiter. So make sure that the person that's reaching out to you is most likely specialized in fintech or tech or cryptocurrency. See if the recruiter has been in the game for a long time or even worked in cryptocurrency or blockchain or even risk or compliance or AML, or if they're simply just, you know, they just changed a bunch of jobs and it's one of these companies that are just hiring recruiters from anywhere that are just reaching out to you. So do your due diligence there. Um, if the message seems spammy, honestly, just ignore it. It's probably not even worth your time. And if you are a serious contender, then I'm sure they'll reach back out to you, which a much better approach. Second thing is, this is standard. Research the company. <laughs> I think that's fairly standard. Look for the red flags. Are they offering products or services without an, a compliance program or an, even an existing AML team that you can figure out on LinkedIn or through their organizational structure? Do they have an existing compliance program, policies, or procedures, or is that something that you would have to build out for them? Check the terms of services. Usually a lot of these companies have a pretty detailed terms of services because they're dealing with customers and users. You'll be able to tell 
are they, do they have a, a statement in there? Do they have a section in there about their AML or counterterrorist financing responsibilities or what they might do with their information, i.e. turning it over to law enforcement? Because that's a really good indicator. If it's a one or two liner that's very vague, they may just be copying and pasting it. And that is definitely a red flag. Other signs, these are pretty basic. It goes for any industry, high turnover. Although I feel crypto and tech the turnover is just, people just don't stay at jobs for very long. So that's not necessarily a red flag if someone's moving from one organization to another. But if a company has a high turnover or things like negative media, we see a lot of blockchain companies that have negative media. And it's like almost like a revolving door when it comes to a compliance program. That's usually no coincidence. It's usually very uh, s- s- synchronized that uh bad negative media, uh, not really compliance professionals wanting to stay there usually means it's probably not the best place to go. Doesn't mean don't go there. It just means be very wary and try to get in, get your experience and see A, if you can turn around the place or B, if it's just something to get those six, seven months worth of experience and move on. Are they in regulatory turmoil? We've seen a lot of companies are dealing with regulators around the world And they're hiring everybody, usually at higher salaries than most. And although that higher salary seems attractive, and I'll get to this point later, it's probably best to either stay clear or approach with extreme caution when dealing with these companies. And did the company just start? Like when you see bull markets, I feel when the price of Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, Ethereum is going up, everyone feels that they can build a business in those markets. What I noticed in 2017, when I went to a lot of cryptocurrency conferences here in Toronto, I don't know too many of those companies that made it to 2020, or at least to this last bull run here at the end of 2020 and 2021. So you always have to be wary of these companies that just get started in the bull run and might just be trying to ride the wave and don't really have a a solid foundation or enough establishment or credibility or foundation built up from previous years. Um, Speak to current and former employees. Uh, It's always good to connect with people that may work there, even just casually asking them what they like, what they don't like. People most likely, if they don't know you and you're just a new connection on LinkedIn, are probably going to be very hesitant in giving you a proper response. So you might be able to actually reach out to what I call master connectors. There's people like the Amber Scotts in the industry uh, and a ton of other people. I just use her as an example because that's the person I go to when I'm trying to vet a company for one reason or not. Like, what have you heard about this? You'll get the real, real deal from certain master connectors. So make sure sure you always keep a close connection with them. And that, on the subject of Amber Scott, if you remember some of my previous uh, postings, uh, the challenge I gave to people about creating their dream job requirement checklist. So this is basically a checklist of everything that you want in your career. So you can use this checklist and go and compare it to some of the company's information, whether it's on the website, their morals, just even they were the way they word their job description. Like if they're fun and playful in the job description, I know breadcrumbs had some really funny job descriptions as well as other people posting jobs. It's actually like that to me is like somewhere maybe will be more aligned with your personality, sense of humor, et cetera. So make sure that the job you're going for is aligned with some of the requirements. You may not hit all of them, but if you get a good percentage of them, then it might be a right company. Even though it might be a right company, it just might not be a right company for you. So think about it. If you're looking for growth and exposure, you may want to go to a smaller company where you have more responsibilities. You're interacting directly with several different business units, and you're probably reporting directly to the the head of compliance or the chief compliance officer or the CAMLO. If you're looking to affect social change like companies like circle with circle impact might be a more appealing to you because they're doing stuff for the community for society using cryptocurrency and that might be a project that you would like to work on so joining their organization and getting exposure to certain projects like that might be important to you if you want to travel working remotely for uh, an organization that's based in another country almost guarantees that you're going to be doing some traveling throughout the year. So it might be something that you're interested in uh, that you want to be able to travel and go around the world and work for companies that might not be in your local jurisdiction. 
show me the money or maybe not. This is one of those things. Be weary of companies that are offering you way above salary ranges. Uh, there's usually some internal or external issues that come with that high price tag. So if you are okay with that and you want to make a lot of money in a short period or long period of time, go for it. But be wary you're usually stepping into a gauntlet filled with hard days, harder nights, and you're also risking your reputation if this company is in fact paying you because they have been over they they haven't been following proper reg, regulations or they haven't they don't have a proper due diligence or compliance program in place usually it's the compliance officers that take the heat when the penalty comes or when there's systematic failures so keep that in mind a company ash brought up a good point a company having funding is important usually when they get to that i'd say about that's the a b c round where they're getting 60 millions uh, tens of millions and hundreds of millions they're usually going to have to invest more into their compliance and legal structure in order to scale the business and enter in different markets so that is huge the good thing is that if the company doesn't have a lot of uh funding you are taking a chance but if you can get equity in the company, you might be able to slip in there before they raise their next fund, get some equity that will grow immensely probably over your actual income or compensation for the year. So that's a sneaky play, may not always work out if the company doesn't have enough runway. But hey, you have to be weighing out your risks and rewards in this industry. In this industry. And just also be careful if you're a one man show, uh, make sure you're well compensated. Uh, and I should say one man or one woman show because your duties will reflect you being the only person in the compliance program. And once again, tons of duties, most likely your reputations on the line. Uh, those are something that those are things that you should be well compensated for. And the last thing and the most important thing is don't listen to me or anyone else. Go with your own gut. I feel in life um, very much about energy and vibrations in life, we always had that gut feeling when we knew something didn't seem right or something felt suspicious. We're, many of us are AML investigators or compliance that listen to this podcast. So we understand that feeling of just suspicion. Uh, and we get that little tingle, I think, sometimes still. And you know what's wrong or right. And the only reason you continue on is because, A, there's something blinding you. So don't take shortcuts because you want to make more money. If that's your thing, that's fine. But I always think making the right decision will lead to better long-term results. Remember, this industry's compliance in this industry and crypto is really just evolving now. You're really early if you've gotten in. Uh, you have a long career ahead of you. There's no sense you know, securing the bag, as everyone would say, right off the bat. When it's not for a really great company, you're spending most of your time stressed out or feeling like you're not getting along with some of the people that work there. So that's one thing. Also, ask a lot of questions in the interview process around things that you're interested in, like culture or like travel. For me, I have two kids. Travel is not something that I want to do as much now. So those are things I look out for. Could I travel? Of course. But if it's something that like I'm traveling 25% or two or three times a month and it's very sporadic and not scheduled, that's not appealing to me no matter how great the job is. So ask a lot of questions. You don't want to be asking about things like vacation and pay and all like how like you can if the subject's up there, you can discuss some things, but make it very general. Like, don't be like, how much bonus do I get at the end of the year? Because I also don't think that's a great interview strategy. It kind of turns people away if you're just worried about what you're getting uh, versus like what you'd be contributing to the team and how you would grow in your role, etc. So be wary how you talk about those things. Um, but don't be desperate. I'm going to bang this home to everybody. Confidence. If you're confident, if you feel like you have a high self-image, people have to approach you at that. If you allow people to approach you with somewhere, there's not even a job description. And I should have put that somewhere in here. Like there should be a job description. It is crypto. There's jobs here today and gone tomorrow. The same jobs you could be in the final interview and they decide to cut the job at the last minute. So make sure that everything's in a row. Are they approaching you with a nice job description with a detail of how they think you can add value to their team, et cetera, or vice versa? Are you approaching them with uh, the transfer transferable skills that you're going to be applying to the position and what you can take from your traditional experience if you have no crypto experience and bring it to blockchain investigations. These are things that you have to communicate. 
but I still think it has to do with a high level of confidence. The one thing I see is the lack of confidence in people applying for jobs. And you can just sense that they're desperate to get any job. So when you convey that, guess what happens? If you're desperate to get any job, you're just going to get exactly that, any job. Be confident in what the role that you want, the compensation that you want, the environment that you want. And I guarantee if a company is not willing to give you that, to, it's going to show in the conversations you have with them. It's going to be hard for them to talk around those points that are important to you. So as long as you exude that confidence, it makes them either really want to give those things to you or be a part of you in their organization. Or I feel like they're going to fold and just be like, oh, you're not a proper fit, which is even better for you. I hope this helps leave anything else because I, I did this one really quickly last minute. So leave anything else that you can help other crypto compliance professionals with uh, or any professionals with when it comes to how you do your due diligence uh, about an organization that you're planning to uh, plan to join. Thanks so much.